Hi folks, here's a little vid about me making some vinyl t-shirts for myself. See you in a minute. Right, well as you know, I've got probably a couple of YouTube channels and uh, I like to promote them in one way or another and one of the ways we do that is by supplying different types of merchandise and one of them is obviously t-shirts. I tend to use the vinyls when I'm creating my own t-shirts to keep the patterns nice and simple, they're easy to cut out and they're easy to apply and they're hard wearing because you can wash them up to 60 degrees centigrade. I've got a little order here for four t-shirts that are going abroad to Europe and these are for someone who watches my other YouTube channel and what I'm going to do is to just go through and print these out and show you how I may or may not alter the size of the actual items depending on the size of the t-shirt and how you can actually do that. So let's have a look now at the cutter and I'll show you what we're going to do. Right, so this is uh, the two items in my design. As you can see, I've got two windows open there. I've saved both of these different images before. There's the words reversed that are going to appear on the image. There's a little drawing, which I do in a different colour, by the way. So I do these in two different colours and I just put them on two separate pages. And as you can see, I've got four individual boxes there, all individual, one, two, three, four. So I've put four on a 12 by 12 sheet there, as you can see, but if I didn't want to cut out four, and I only wanted to cut out the top one, all you would do would be to go to your cut settings menu, which is obviously the little cut blade settings menu. At the top of the page there, you can see some different cat categories there. For example, if I didn't want to cut out all of these, I just draw a box around these ones, these three bottom ones, for example, like that, and then hit the no cut icon there. And as you can see, they sort of gray out, you could say. Let me just click outside now. So all I've left on is one there, which is very dark, and the other three below are all grayed out, so to speak. So what happened is, is that once I put them through into the cutter, it would only cut out the top one. And so that would save me wasting a whole sheet of paper, for example. And any cut I do, I always put the graphic at the top of the page so that as it goes in, I've still got all this lot left behind me. So anyway, I'm just gonna uh, bring them back up there. Now I could either hit the back, back arrow there to bring them back up highlighted again, or I'll just show you, just again, highlight all the boxes that you want to, to deal with, and then just press the cut button again, and they all come back up. So that way you can print, you can have them all on one sheet of paper. Printing off one, you only need to print, cut the top one off, for example, to save you cutting out all the rest and storing them. So there's that one. So the other page there, which is a simple design again, which I've got two different elements there. Right, so again, I want all four of these, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a test cut first. So I'm gonna go over to my cut settings. I'm gonna choose the heat transfer material smooth, which is down there. I'm just going to scroll down the page. I like to have the speed up to eight and also the thickness on the software there up to eight as well. And then we can just do a little test cut by pressing the test cut. Now what's happened there is we've just done a little test cut in the corner. I'm going to unload the page. And hopefully what I should be left with is a little box just by picking and leave the triangle behind as it's just done there. Look, you can just see that there. I've just picked the little box out there and the triangle stayed on the page. So I know that I've got my cut settings at the right depth. So I can now go ahead and just put my vinyl back into my cutter, just lining it up and pressing load media. And just click in the cut icon. And as we can see now, off it goes to do its job. Right, okay then, so I've just cut this image out as well in a different colour. 
So as I say, down at the bottom there, I designed one part of the image on one page, and down there on the second page, I designed the second part of the image on another page. That's just an easy way to do it, and I'll just combine both coloured vinyls on the actual T-shirt in the colour I could design. Now this I could cut out on any transfer, any any sort of design vinyl. It could be blue, pink, green, sparkly, and I may decide to do this one in a totally different colour. Well, it, because of the way I designed this T-shirt, I have this in a colour, I'll do this in the luminous yellow, and the other image there, I do that in white vinyl. So I've got a match of two colours which I have on the vinyl. Again, about resizing. These are going to be on a double XL and an XL T-shirt. And so if, if I click on all the individual elements, as you can see, they give their dimensions there in inches at the bottom. But if I want to get the dimensions of the overall element, if you go outside the box and just drag a box around it by holding your left mouse button down, you see they all come highlighted. And while they're all highlighted, it gives you the dimensions of the complete box, which is 10.2 inches there. So that's across the whole width. And all I would do then would be to lay my t-shirt down on a work table, measure across the breast area, and if it needs to be reduced, all I would do would get out of a diagonal corner bit once that's all highlighted. And as you can see, I'm just reducing the size now. The size is going down, going down, going down. Let's say I wanted eight inches. So I'd bring that right down now to around eight inches, about there and uh, click outside and as you can see I've resized the image now to the new size. All individual elements st would still move individually look, if I move them, look, I've pulled it out of the way, look down there, but again using the uh, back arrow up there you can just automatically put it back in its same place and if I wanted to resize everything back to its original before I save the file again I'll just go back again back to each individual element, keep going, hitting the back button and as you can see, all the movements are now back to where they was originally. And all I did there was hit the back button. Failing that, if you did mess about with the actual orientation or, or each individual element and slightly got something out of squiff, like I've done there, they're all out of squiff now. When you click to save the page or close the page up, it'll ask you, do you want to save the changes? No, I don't want to save the changes. If I did save the changes, I'd save them in that position now. So I'll just revert back to the original by clicking no. The page will shut up and everything would have been saved as it was. So if, if you ever alter or play about of anything, you can either hit the back arrow up there to get yourself back to where you want it to be. Or when you come to close the page by there or the corner up there, it will come up with, do you want to save any changes? And you either say, no, you don't want to save the changes you made. In other words, it will result back to its original. Now, just before I started this page off, I only had one of these on there. So when I close this now, it'll ask me if I want to save the changes. Well, I'm going to say yes, I'm going to save the changes because I like the idea of having four on there. So I'm just going to save the changes. And there we go. And I've got them saved on a, a file on my desktop, which is up there. And every one of my cutter templates will be saved in there. In other words, if I go to the cutter templates window again, go to my retro restore vinyls, and if I click on that one, hold the control button down and hold left click on that one as well, and just right click and say open. It'll open up the Silhouette Cameo software again, and both pages would have reloaded just as they was, as you can see there. And that's how you basically can create a two color design by having each design created on a separate page. But make sure you put them at the top of the paper so that when you cut off, for example, or when the, when, when the vinyl goes in the machine, it's literally only just putting the first image up there so you can save all this down there. So I've cut my last vinyl out now on the white t-shirt. So let's just cut them out now to size and weed them out. Right, again, I've probably shown this many times before, that when you get a sheet of vinyl, one, as I said to you, make sure that you put your design right at the very top when you're cutting it out in the cutter. And two, if you're slicing the vinyl up, Make sure you've got a cutting square, like an A2 board like I have here, which is one of those cut mats. Get yourself a nice, solid, straight, stainless steel, bendable uh, uh, tape measure if you can. The trouble with these ones is, these triple, these tri ones, although you can hold them like that, if you've got a bend in your table, which you will, you will get after a while, when you put these on the flat area, and because they're solid, you'll find the vinyl can move underneath them. Whereas this one, any bend in the table, because it's flexible in that manner, 
they will bend and you can hold them dead solid no matter how warped or bent your table is. Just a little tip there for you. So what I tend to do is always make sure that you don't go cutting your vinyls with a pair of scissors like that and just cutting a straight, to, you know, just to cut it off. Because when you come to feed that next bit into the vinyl cutter, you'll have a devil's own job lining things up. And not only that, if your vinyl cutters uh, if, you find all, if your lines are all wonky, it's very hard to line up things on a t-shirt if you're dealing with wonky lines. So I always put my vinyls on the grid section, lined up there, and you can just see, I can just see on there where the, me, me writing finishes. And all I'm going to do then is put my spirit, my tape measure, just where I need to be on there, going right across there like that, and get me, me knife, hold it down in the centre, not firm pressure, just gently. Bring it along like that. And I know that if this was the remainder of a full sheet, I've got a lovely straight edge to go into machine the next time. I'm gonna keep that there because we probably will use that. And this is me design now. So when I come to lay it on my t-shirt, I've got a straight line on the top, straight line on the bottom. So that when I lay it down, it's very easy for me to line other graphics up along the top or below that. And you know that you're gonna be dealing with straight lines. So let me just go over now. I've done all four of these now. Let's go and weed these out. But just before I do that, I'll just show you, look, Sharon's got all these to do yet. She's got another lot of batch coming. These are all individual t-shirts. Every one of them graphics goes on the center of one t-shirt or hoodie or whatever. So that's what she's done there. She's got them lot to do. She's done a load already. You can see there we've got a box there, which is uh, already packaged up, which is halfway through these at the moment. Let me show you inside. So again, this is how we get our t-shirts. We order them in specifically for each individual job. And you can see here we're dealing with a batch of red t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that. This was ordered for one customer. Uh, this is a repeat customer. We've had loads and loads of orders off of these people. Again, this is what I was telling you about ordering stuff for uh, getting in, involved with clubs and stuff like that. Whenever they get new subscribers or new people for this club, we get a t-shirt order. And don't forget, they're paying for us. Uh, they pay us. And they're getting the money off of the actual parents or whatever of the children involved in the club. And it's just there's quite a few left there for Sharon to do when I finish doing this tutorial. Right, okay, then that's everything now cut out as you saw. And what I like to do is just take it one step further. You may see on here, for example, I've got the spanners and also a, a line of text with a, a slight block art either side of it. Well, I like to separate them and put them either side of the yellow writing. So all I do again, because I'm dealing with straight lines, if you just lay down your image on your cutting table, because it's sticky, it's nice and easy to apply. Just tack it down on there. And now I'm dealing with straight lines. I can see a nice straight line through there. So I'm just gonna put the straight edge again in a straight line. Cross there, hold down, cut through the mylar backing, like that. And now I've separated them so that when I come to apply it to the garment, let me show you. I can get me right in. Let's say, for example, I put that there, for example. I'll line that up below it, like that, and then I'll use that one to go underneath that. And as you can probably see, let me show you. I've got a dual, like, a dual color there, for example, but everything lines up, because I've kept all the lines straight of the transfer paper, as you can see, everything's straight, and I know that everything lines up. Look, that's because I've kept everything lined up by cutting all the edges square and keeping everything central. There you go. There's our dual color vinyl, which is gonna go onto our black t-shirt. Could go on any color t-shirt, it doesn't really matter. And that's how I produce dual color vinyls on one t-shirt. Well, this is for my YouTube channel, my other YouTube channel. Well, I'll just wait for the press to heat up and we'll press this and I'll show you how we line it up on the t-shirt. 
Right, okay, then here we go. I'm gonna be printing this on a large T-shirt, first of all. We've got two sizes to do, but I'm just gonna show you on the large. And as always, what I'm gonna do is to pre-press my T-shirt. Now, one other thing which I've probably never shared with you before is when you turn your press on from cold, once it's up to temperature, just clamp it down without anything, and that heats up the base plate as well, because the heat can be sucked out from the heat plate with the initial first press, because the heat plate is cold. But uh, that's just something just to remember as well. And again, I'm gonna do what I normally do there. I'm gonna give my T-shirt a quick blast with a 10 or five, a five or 10 second blast, just to get all the moisture out. And this really does work. I can see steam coming out of it already. And as I said to you before, steam or water will be a bad thing if you're trying to attach your transfers, which is a hot glue on the back of the vinyl paper, and that steam will stop the vinyl from sticking properly to the T-shirt. So always beware that you do pre-press your garments, even though you think they may be dry, because nine times out of 10, they won't be, even if they're in a central heated house like these here. But don't forget when they come from a warehouse, from the supplier, they are probably stored in a warehouse and warehouses are not very warm places and hold moisture. Very important, that'll get a lot of emails from people saying their vinyls aren't sticking and that's one of the first things I tell them to check. And again, I get many questions from people saying how do you line things up correctly? Many ways of doing that. Simplest way is literally just to fold the garment in half until your sleeves line up, get your sleeves lined up correctly. Make sure it's hanging correctly as well because a lot of these garments aren't factory straight anyway. So just get them turned over there and all we're looking for is a crease line down the center. You'll find it'll, it'll hang on its natural line anyway. So just give a little five second blast down the middle. Like that. And as you open it up, you will have a naturally occurring line, which I don't know whether you can see there, straight down the middle of the garment without you having to locate it between measuring from uh, point to point there. So that's where our center line is. And don't forget, I'm not using a tape measure in this experiment. And all I'm gonna do now is to take my first image, and my first image is the spanners. Now it's not in the center of the vinyl, so if I close, if I went like that and folded that in half, you can see it's not in the center. So what I've got to basically do is to find the center of my actual vinyl image. And I'm pretty lucky here. I can fold it in half and line up either side of the spanner. I've got a cross in the center there. And as you can probably see there, I've got a crease mark above and below, which is my center of my graphic. So I know that by lining it up with the line on the T-shirt, and all I've got to find is my height really. I'm laying that down there like that. That will be in the correct position. I then get my next graphic, which is me writing. And again, if you fold it backwards, you ain't got to worry about the sticking. So just fold it back to back like that. Little crease where the, where it would have joint in the center. And I've got me line then on the vinyl mylar for the center of the graphic. And I'll just line that up again with the center of the graphic. So that everything lines up on there like that. That's number two. And the last bit is the bottom strip. Again, line, fold it over backwards so you ain't got the sticky part on each other. Line the two edges of the last part up. Put your crease in it, open it up. There's your center, and that just lines up with that center line again. So that now is our graphic lined up, which we can put on our heat press now. There you go, so let's just pull it over there. Lay it down. Put the collar over the back there, as you know, as we said on many occasions. Get my Teflon sheet to protect the garment. Push that back in there. Have one more turn down. Hold it down, firm pressure, in this case, for 20 seconds. So let's get this up after the 20 seconds. All right, there we go. Again, these are hot peel vinyls, these ones. So I can pull that out. I can pull that off straight away. Like that. 
and like that. Over there. There we go. And as you can see there, one classic t-shirt vinyl there in different colour. And don't forget I've got to change the colour of any one of them to whatever combination I wanted. And that is how you produce vinyls for custom t-shirts for a, a client or a customer, possibly with a YouTube channel. There's hundreds of thousands of YouTube channels out there. It only means that you've got to contact the uh, owner of that channel and say would they like a custom t-shirt for their channel uh, as a one-off or whatever, you might get one order. And if you do 10 or 15 of them a day, you've got a lovely little income. There you go, hope that was of some interest to you. And don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. And also check out my other YouTube videos because I get so many people asking me about questions that I've already answered in previous videos and I can't actually reflect and go through or tell them to point to the right video. Just go through them all, it's all free information or failing that, uh, go to my link in the description below for my training DVDs where I offer a full email support where you can ask me any questions and I give full email support to people who buy and watch the training DVDs. Okay then, thanks very much and see you in the next video and until then, bye for now.